Moving on when your favorite show ends can be very tough, but sometimes you gotta get back out there. Hey guys, Elise from Ms. Mojo here. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shows to watch if you liked Orange is the New Black. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at TV shows that are similar in style and or story to Netflix's Orange is the New Black. Let's get started. So, what are you gonna do now? Number 10, Weeds. If you like Orange is the New Black, then you should check out Genji Kohan's previous show, Weeds. You sold $2,000 in a day. Impressive, huh? Temporary. This is not a career path. This is a family in crisis. Like Orange, Weeds deftly blends comedy with violence and heated drama, and it is glorious to watch. It follows Nancy Botwin, a suburban mother from Los Angeles who starts distributing marijuana. I don't take drugs. When have you ever seen me take drugs? Oh, you may not take them, but... Sure do sell them. It's kind of like Breaking Bad before Breaking Bad was a thing. Mary Louise Parker turns in a stunning and Golden Globe winning performance as Nancy, and Genji Cohan imbues the show with her trademark wit. Do you think I'm a bad person? I don't think you're a bad person. No. <laughs> The only thing holding Weeds back is a relatively weak second half, as critical opinion tends to dip in the later seasons. That said, the good seasons are really good seasons. Any chance you speak Spanish? Huh? Never mind. Oh, I have to warn you. My last two relationships, both guys ended up dead. Number 9, Russian Doll. If you're craving more Natasha Lyonne, then Russian Doll is for you. Luckily, it's also on Netflix. Who loves drugs more than me? You, nobody. Yeah. Who loves orgies more than you? This guy. <laughs> Lyonne is one of the main creative forces behind Russian Doll, serving as co-creator, co-executive producer, writer, and director. She also stars as Nadia, a troubled woman who gets stuck in a time loop and begins reliving her 36th birthday over and over again. It's a brilliant and extremely well-written show, reminiscent of Groundhog Day, but it's also a very personal story for Leon, who considers it her autobiography. You know, minus all the time loop stuff. The show somehow manages to blend breathless comedy with elements of horror, science fiction, and personal introspective drama. Nothing in this world is easy, except pissing in the shower. Natasha Leon is here to stay, people. I forgot that you're turned off by chivalry, but it's sweet. Yeah, well, so is Cyanide. Number 8, Glow. Glow is another female-centric comedy drama found on Netflix, and it is absolutely terrific. Genji Kohan serves as an executive producer on the show, which tells a fictionalized account of the real Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling promotion. I'm sorry, are you, are you hiring actors to play wrestlers, or are we the wrestlers? Yes. Which one? It stars Alison Brie as Ruth Wilder, a struggling actress who begins wrestling to boost her name. Well, it's not porn. Just so you know. However, much like Piper Chapman, she is just one part of a wide ensemble cast, as the real-life Glow featured many struggling artists who used the promotion as a stepping stone to bigger and better things. Each actor brings their character to life with humor, vivid style, and surprising complexity, and the ensemble is arguably the best on television since, well, Orange is the New Black. I've never been to Vegas. Oh, you're gonna hate it. Number 7, Shameless. Shameless does not make for easy casual viewing, let us tell you that. You don't get to abandon your kids and then show up one day to take your pick of the litter! It concerns Frank Gallagher, a belligerent, unambitious drunk whose alcoholism negatively affects both his life and the lives of his six children. When the father is there, he's drunk. He hits them. Not, not that they don't deserve it, they're all criminals, delinquents, vile... Excuse me, what? sir. Could you give me your name, please? No. If it's all right, I would like to remain anonymous. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. No, thank you, and God bless you. 
The producers have stated that they wish to make this a more realistic depiction of poverty and familial unrest than other working class sitcoms like Married with Children. And as such, it can make for a painful and uncomfortable experience. Frank? That's going on all day, every day. My son is suffering. Have you no soul? If you fill out an application now, I can almost guarantee that for next year, he doesn't have a year. However, it's not all doom and gloom, as the series is also very, very funny. Its stellar quality has remained consistent throughout its run, which is more than most shows can say. Who the f are you? I'm Frank. Number 6, The L Word. One of the most famous and commendable aspects of Orange is the New Black is its nuanced portrayal of LGBT characters. If you want that part of Orange, but as a whole show, then you should check out The L Word. There you are. I'm just waiting for the washroom. Do you want to use the The L Word was a Showtime drama that followed a group of lesbians in their everyday lives. Hi, Jenny. Hey. So, how do you like the planet? It's beautiful. It's nice. You want to come to my reading group? Yes. That means I can read one of your stories. No, you can read anything you want. While The L Word has been criticized for being rather melodramatic and soap opera-y, it was also a groundbreaking series for its time. It starred openly gay characters, portrayed them as being complex and interesting, and like Orange is the New Black, it showed them having raw and graphic sex. There was nothing like it in 2004, and it helped scratch a major representational itch. I know your deal. No, you don't. I do. You're thinking, here's this stupid little straight girl <laughs> who doesn't know who she is or what she wants to do with her life, and you're just going to sit there and be charming until I sleep with you. Oh, I think nothing of the sort. Really? Really? You don't want to sleep with me? No. Why not? <laughs> Number five, good girls. It's not often that you see a drama as great as Good Girls on network TV. How many cars would we have to sell to make 200 grand? Ballpark. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, 20 or 30. Good Girls is an NBC crime drama comedy hybrid starring Mae Whitman, Retta, and Christina Hendricks as three suburban mothers who decide to rob a supermarket. All three actresses are fantastic in their roles, and much like Orange is the New Black, they embody multifaceted antiheroes who make for thrilling and unpredictable protagonists. She murdered him, Beth. We were about to do the same thing. Yeah, we didn't. And we sure as hell weren't gonna chop him up. It will certainly fill that unique, female-led crime drama comedy hole that Orange is the New Black left behind. And it's also a wonderful show in its own right. Remember when we did that 23 and Me thing a while back? Yeah, wasn't Dean like 90% Neanderthal? Yeah, yes, but you had to keep the swabs cold or the DNA would like immediately start breaking down and it wasn't viable. Plus, you can never really get enough of Christina Hendricks. She's just magnificent. Oh my god. I mean, they never actually get around to these things, right? Oh my god. It's not like anybody believes in science anymore. Number four, girls incarcerated, young, and locked up. I am in prison, but this place is helping me do better in life. If I wasn't here, then I'll probably be dead. Girls Incarcerated is a very interesting Netflix documentary TV series about the female inmates of Indiana's Madison Juvenile Correctional Facility. It's like Orange is the New Black, but in real life. Like the show, it also depicts a few prison character archetypes, for lack of a better word. I was together with Christiana Hutchinson. We was together for like three months and we fell off. There's the new inmate who clashes with various prisoners. There's the inmates eagerly awaiting their upcoming release. And there's the bad girl who causes trouble for everyone. What's up? Bye. It's a fascinating look into prison life, the interesting people within, the circumstances that brought them there, and the effects that prison has on their development and characters. No, but I have spoken with my mom. About Your mom? It. What did she say? Um, I'm going home with her. Oh, wow. No, you heard me. <laughs> I'm going that? home with her. Your mama. Well, that's exciting. Number three, prison break. 
Schofield, Michael, 94941. You're a religious man, Schofield. Never really thought about it. Good, because the Ten Commandments don't mean a box of piss in here. We got two commandments and two only. The first commandment is you got nothing coming. What's the second commandment? See commandment number one. Prison Break was the hottest show on television for like one year there. The first season aired throughout 2005 and 2006, and it followed Michael Schofield as he planned an elaborate prison break to get his falsely accused brother off of death row. This thing will go a whole lot easier if you just hire me. What is this all about? Say you were able to get outside those walls. Would you have the people in place to make sure you disappeared forever? What do you care? Just curious. It was one of the biggest TV events of the mid-2000s, competing with other buzzworthy network dramas like 24 and Lost. It's certainly more fast-paced than Orange is the New Black and far more violent and action-oriented, but it's still an exhilarating series centered around prison drama and familial relationships. What do you remember, Dad? Your dad? Mm -hmm. I didn't know him. Your mom said some pretty horrible stuff about him when we were growing up. Just maybe stop somewhere around season two. Things kind of go off the rails after that. Come on, move it. Like a con. <laughs> Number two, Oz. Oz is the prison show to end all prison shows. And fun fact, it was also the first one hour drama to be produced by HBO. With Oz, HBO boldly entered the television market and staked their claim as television's most ambitious, controversial, and adult-oriented network. The series chronicles the lives of the inmates of Oswald State Penitentiary, a fictional maximum security prison. Spread the word, I want a meeting of the entire Brotherhood. The show stars a stellar cast who portrays some truly despicable characters, and it features all the gruesome violence and disturbing sequences you expect from HBO. Oz proved that HBO was an ambitious network willing to take risks and show raw and mature content unlike anything else on television. You called somebody and asked them for a favor. Why would I do that? Because a session the other day didn't go your way? Because you couldn't manipulate me? Because you're a twisted f It's a little low budget by today's HBO standards, but it's a seminal piece of television history. The one thing through all of this shit you've said over and over again is that you love me. And all you wanted was for me to say I love you back. Well, I came today to tell you, to see your face when I tell you that it'll never ever happen. In fact, it's the opposite. I hate you. I will always hate you until we are both dead in the ground. I will hate you! Man, there are a lot more prison shows than I realized. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few other shows to fill that orange is the new black shaped void in your heart. Hello? Hello? Who's this? What are you doing? I just got here from Juvenile Hall, and so I didn't know anything about toilet talking, any of that. Oh, shit. <laughs> There you go. You okay? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. You want some water? No. You want some ice cream? No, thank you. Oh, shit. No one gets ice cream now, I guess. Good to see you. I know what was you doing here. I followed you from Mother's house. No, I shot you. You were dead. You were dead. Yes, you did. It's a miracle. We were meant to be together. Heck, you're so sure about it. Maybe you should just kill him for me. You're asking me to kill this man. No, that was... Uh, I, I was joking. Jackie? <laughs> Jackie? Jackie. Jackie? Hey. Jackie? Jackie. Hang in there. I need a line. Get me out. Number one, Wentworth. Fletch, Fletch, grab it. Please need to bring my daughter. Wentworth is basically Orange is the New Black's Australian counterpart, as the two share a shocking number of similarities. We had a game of basketball last week. You should have seen Mr. Jackson in his shorts. <laughs> We lost that game. Only because you guys were standing his ass the whole time. Exactly. At first, the show chronicles the adventures of new inmate B. Smith as she slowly adapts to prison life. In later seasons, it opens up to include more of an ensemble cast of female inmates. Sound familiar? <laughs> ah! 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 
It also portrays the inmates as three-dimensional and complex people, and it too features lesbianism as a major theme. The major difference between Wentworth and Orange is that Wentworth is far more gritty, violent, and exciting, more akin to Prison Break and Oz. <laughs> That said, if you prefer your orange a little darker, like seasons two and four, then Wentworth is your show. I just came here to work out. This one's for me. Hopefully Wentworth never ends because I don't think I could handle another loss. What do you guys think of our list? Will you be checking out any of these shows when orange ends? Let us know in the comments below and check out this video.